What are the general rules regarding retroactivity in California? Well, generally statutes operate prospectively only. Moreover, the presumption against retroactive legislation is deeply rooted in California's jurisprudence and embodies a legal doctrine centuries older than our republic, the courts have said. In California, a statute is presumed to operate prospectively, and in construing statutes, there's a presumption against retroactive application unless the legislature plainly has directed otherwise by means of the express language of retroactivity or other sources that provide a clear and unavoidable implication that the legislature intended retroactive application of a statute. Moreover, a statute should be construed to preserve its constitutionality, and the burden of establishing the unconstitutionality of a statute rests on the party who is assailing it, and courts may not declare a legislative classification to be invalid unless viewed in the light of facts made known or generally assumed it is, that is the bill or the statute, is of a character that precludes the assumption that a classification rests upon some rational basis within the knowledge and experience of legislators. Now, the California Supreme Court says that the general rule in California is that if the legislature clearly indicated its intent that an amendment to a statute is to be applied retroactively, then a court generally must honor that intent unless there's a constitutional objection to doing so. The Supreme Court said that the presumption against statutory retroactivity has consistently been explained by reference to the unfairness of imposing new burdens on persons after the fact. Now, that's not to say that a statute may never apply retroactively. The court said a statute's retroactivity is, in the first instance, a policy determination for the legislature and one to which the courts defer, absent a constitutional objection to that retroactivity. Again, they said the basic rule in California is that a statute may be applied retroactively only if it contains express language of retroactivity or if other sources provide a clear and unavoidable implication that the legislature intended retroactive application. The California Supreme Court made the statement, made this statement, where a statute provides that it clarifies or declares existing law, it is obvious that such a provision is indicative of a legislative intent that the amendment apply to all existing causes of action from the date of the statute's enactment. In accordance with the general rules of statutory construction, we must give effect to this intention unless there is some constitutional obje objection there too. Now, California courts look to the text of the bill and the legislative materials to determine whether this enacted bill made a change in the law or whether the later enacted bill clarified existing law. If the bill represents a clarification of existing law, then the bill is applied to all instances both retroactively and prospectively. On the other hand, if the bill enacts a change in the law, then the court looks to determine whether the legislature intended for the law to, uh, for the law change to be applied retroactively. And so here the court basically asks, did the legislature make a clear intent to apply the change in law retroactively? The court said the legislature has no authority to interpret a statute. That is a judicial task. The legislature may define the means or the meaning of statutory language by a present enactment. And it can try to deem it retroactive. But the legislature has no authority simply to say what it did mean. Courts do take cognizance of such declarations where they are consistent with the original intent. A subsequent expression of the legislature as to the intent of the prior statute 
although not binding on the court, may properly be used in determining the effect of a prior act.